Mic'd up. Alrighty. This is episode one uh, of the SMC Mic'd Up series that we will be doing. Uh, myself, I am Mark Goular. I'm a sixth year senior at St. Mary's. Um, my coach accompanies me in this uh, first episode. Coach Greg Moore, thank you for just hopping on. Uh, you want to introduce yourself, Coach, really quick? Mark, how you doing? Good. How we doing? I'm good. Hey, Mark, when we scheduled this, I didn't realize it would be at the same time we have a Bay Area legend in the house. Oh, man. But he's right here next to me. I want to introduce you to him and and everybody to Professor B. B. How you doing? How you doing, Mark? Hey, how we doing? Good to have you hey, on. I'm glad to be on board after 24 seasons on the hilltop, being the the new reporter and uh, going to be doing for um, St. Mary's Gales. Yes, sir. We're happy to have you out here. I've been uh, been here for the last five years. Every time I go out to USF, I see you're the, the strongest supporter there. Uh, yeah, now I think you, know, you, you might have some to, competition here with on, Mark. You know, I, I've been yeah. at that program for a long time. You know the story, what happened with Coach G. It was yes, sir. that thing. It had to happen this way. But, you know, I... I wanted to try something new. It's like leaving an old record label, like leaving Motown, go to a different record label where you have control of your own product. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. The, uh, you got some competition coming in here because we have Gonzo Silva here. And so Ooh. you guys, Gonzo Silva, one of okay. our, our fans for years and years. So you guys uh, you guys will be battle, battling it out for the, for the top spot, but very happy to have you out here. Uh, I mean, I'm not here for population. I'm just trying to be myself, though. Just you yes, know, sir. I'm just you know, I'm here because I love what I do. I've been doing this since uh, full time since 2000, and it's ironically, you remember, Greg, our first ever, um, our first ever, um, our first road trip covered uh, was uh, when we played St. Mary's on the other field back in 2000. That's right. And yeah. um, unfortunately, um, we got swept. Uh, we lost that Friday game. We got beaten at double hair on, I believe it was on Easter weekend. And it was, um, you know, I don't think we didn't win that. When I was on that bus, we didn't win like when I was there in person on the road, local, didn't win that one single road game. So, you know, um, but that was then, you know, and the, that third baseman outfielder, Mark Tian, was playing for St. Mary's at that time. And, you know, if you look at it now, I'm excited. You got a two time, I mean, a Cy Young Award winner. Uh, Corbin Burns could win another one this year. Um, I'm ex I'm excited. This is kind of, and they had how many all stars? They had a bunch of all stars for the Dodgers play for St. Mary's. So yeah, yeah, this thing is growing. And it's going in the right direction. You know, and special shout out to um, Eric Balancer. Well, he got to get a lot of credit changing the culture. Which, by the way, he was recruited by Neo Giratano when he was at Arizona State, then transferred over to Pepperdine. And mm -hmm. pitch, and it, like, like I said, like my friend uh, told me, very inspirational. Um, she told me when one door closes, another one opens, and it opened up for him at Pepperdine when it didn't work out. And I, and just the guys, I told, I ran to some of the players and just told them, you know, hey, you guys work hard, don't give coaches a hard time. I, I like to be around people with positive, and one we work as a team. We're not a bunch of individuals on this. We were in this together, you know. That that experience I experienced at USF broke my heart so bad it wasn't even funny. And I, I'm and I kind of put that behind me. I'm re this time rededicating myself to be the best broadcaster I can possibly be. Yes, yeah, so and we we welcome you with open arms here. Uh, you mentioned community. You mentioned uh, being together as a team, and and uh, you are family now. So we're we're very very welcome. Uh, very happy to have you. You're your new history here or your past history coming into, into uh, bringing it into our, our Gales legacy. Now um, I think that's, it's going to be something that's only going to put us to more Coach on Giratano. top. He really, he was a mentor to me. He gave me this opportunity. I mean, I did USF Don's weekly um, shows on channel 29 when they really was at the, the threshold and, 2005 and 06, when they went to the regionals for the first time, I had an enjoyment with those guys. Those yeah. players, Stefan, Scott, uh, Grayling, those guys, 
I was a big brother to those guys. But I have I have two younger, uh, two of the, of the three sisters um, were about their same age, so I can relate. Yeah, I can relate to those guys. I tell them, hey, this is what y'all do. If y'all, you know, if any any drama goes down at a bar, just pack up and get on out of there. Exactly. I don't want to miss this opportunity because these, these, these opportunities to get to a regional don't happen too much. And, you know, there's a small window and you got to take advantage of it in the present. You, yes, sir. I, I, Mark, what a lot of people don't know is B's, B's been doing this for a long time and he's kind of a, a legend in the Bay Area when it comes to covering sporting events. Yeah. If you find a World Series in the area, B's going to be there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I've been to three Giants World Series parades. Uh, the 2012 was my favorite because I think that's where you and Coach G was. Uh, I was like spaced out. I was like, in, I felt like I was in Disneyland that day. Yeah. I was like downtown Market Street. I was like, I couldn't hear anything. I was just like, I was just zoned out. That was special. But you know, this year, Mark, would, would mark the 10 year anniversary of that, the last USF team to go to a regional. Can you that's believe right. that? And, you know, at, and you know, that was fun. That first year of the West Coast Conference tournament, yeah. and um, and when Derek Atkinson hit that walk off three run home run, <laughs> that was when after when Coach got to remember that when he got thrown out of that game, oh, yeah, and, and then the story game. was he busted out of the door like the rate like in the raging bulls, the reign of the bulls. <laughs> I mean, that was an emotional win. We <laughs> Derek Atkinson walk off home run. I came in there, got that perfect zoom shot of Atkinson, and just like. Then that Cal pulled us to the championship game, but then we lose, uh, lost two to Zip, and Christian Cecilio pitched well. You sure did. And, you know, had that great year in 2015. You know, if they would have had better run support or if, they, if the bullpen had uh, gave away some of those games, he's a consensus first team or at worst first or at worst second team consensus All-American. Yeah. That's, he was like our Matt King at that time. He was good. <laughs> he's doing great. Uh, Mark, I'm, I'm glad you got a chance to meet B. Yeah. He's a good friend. He used yeah. to come to the field when I was playing, and he would do some workouts, but then he started broadcasting um, yeah. soon after. So I've known him a long time. He's a special guy. Yeah, yeah very, welcome. very welcome. Did you to also to put this on – I'm going to text this on to me because I want to put, post this on Facebook. we got to figure out the technology here, yeah. B. We're, we're just learning. <laughs> I know. It's a process. That's what Coach G always says. It's part of the process. <laughs> yes, sir. We're better with tech than we are. Yeah, I've been doing. Right. It. I mean, I, I've been trying to learn to adapt myself. The, the thing I'm trying to learn more, like when people are on the phone, though, when they're now remotely, I'm trying to like, hey, don't. I mean, don't jump off sides when they're on. <laughs> don't jump I'm, off sides. I, I, I practice that all the time. I, the new things I'm practicing when I, when it's like yeah, etiquette at the beach. I try to put my phone in the in my pocket with my headphones. I don't have to watch it on YouTube. I can just visualize like Vince Scully. And because I don't want, because I, <laughs> I was at the beach one day, right? And I had my phone, I had my phone, right? I mean, they, these two young ladies think I was filming them. I said, no, 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 no. Friend of mine was like, had to straighten everything out. And like, it, it was all good. I apologize. Sorry for the inconvenience. So I would never do that to you guys because I'm not, you know. But it's using your imagination creative with radio. And I, one of the things I like to do for uh, St. Mary's, like I could have baseball. We do baseball coverage, even on the road. We need to have more coverage with audio, radio, because that's where you know I don't like listen to everybody else's uh, broadcasters when uh, they don't have their regular guy with that road team. Um, it, it makes it's kind kind of that John Miller, Dave Fleming, reserver. Did you know? Yeah, yeah. you're very descriptive. B, you you alluded to something that I want you to. To hit today, you do impersonations, right? And you've got one really good one. Which one is that? That's my favorite, Finn Scully. Hi, everybody. This is Vince Scully. Welcome to Dodger Stadium. Welcome to our game of the week between the Los Angeles Dodgers wow. and the San Francisco Giants. <laughs> That's unbelievable. That's actually well, incredible. I started with the '86 World Series, the NBC. The, um, that time you tried to. Um, Try to uh, try to rip them. Try to I borrow my uh, New York Mets '86 uh, uh, DVD collection. I still got put away in my basement. But now I can watch it on YouTube many times I can want. <laughs> there you go. But that's where I started watching baseball. I mean, the game of the week was Saturdays. Saturday night cartoons. This week, the baseball with Brown. 
watch a little Soul Train and then watch uh, or the American Bandstand with Dick Clark <laughs> and then watch uh, Ben and Joe or um, or Bob Costas or Tony Kubek. And then, you know, that was my weekend. Don't forget about this weekend baseball. Oh, yeah, that's right. Mel Allen. Yeah. And then on Monday nights, uh, Al Michaels and uh, Tim McCarver and uh, Jim Palmer. <laughs> now, the Millennials, uh, they, 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 they're, they're probably jealous. I said, man, we wish we, we had those guys back in our day because we have to listen to Joe Buck. You don't like Joe Buck? <laughs> well, some of these announcers, not well, outside of John Miller, Dwayne Kuyper, or Mike Kruko. Yeah. And uh, Dave Fle- Fleming is good, though, too. But the thing I've learned, though, and one thing Dave Fleming, um, Dave Fleming uh, said, um, he started low in the minor leagues and played, or he did play by play. He went to Stanford. It wasn't glamour playing in a, uh, in a um, baseball uh, run down. He had to do all the dirty work, wash laundry, make the P- PBJ sandwiches, and similar thing what we experienced at USF. When we started, we had didn't have that much little baseballs, right? And y'all had to go door to door on the holidays and um, do uh, Christmas seal. I think that's what Jason Howard told me. Yeah, we were selling Christmas trees. Selling Christmas seeds. Oh, Christmas tree. Oh, Christmas tree. <laughs> Get the USF Don, DeMarie Diamond Dons. <laughs> I mean, that's, that was like the, the, the first episode. Because I didn't come into the spring of 99, but those are some good pilot episodes, too, you know. Without a doubt. It's good history. It's great history, you know. Yes, sir. Uh, what, what questions do you have for us over here? Yes. Yeah, so, I mean, uh, really quick. I mean, we, we got a couple of things to go through where when we're going to be talking about the vision of what we want to do with Mike Up, uh, why we're, we're on this, uh, getting in touch with people. We're going to be touching our alumni base, uh, community engagement, um, going over some of, our, of some of our alumni as well as some of our current players. We have a player recap at the end of, the, of each episode, one episode per week. Um, and at the very end, we have... Uh, a hot take, hot, uh, a current baseball hot take. Uh, also could be other sports related. Um, but as of right now, uh, we will finish up the intros. I already told um, our, our audience that my name is Mark Goulart, uh, six-year uh, senior uh, catcher, got some experience under my belt, uh, played with a, a variety of, of the guys. Uh, Yours truly was a catcher, though, too, back in the high school. I gave that up because, yeah. uh, you know, it's wear on the knees, though. But the great – and my, my first base um, – I play first base. <laughs> but this is the great thing. When you when you take off the catcher's gear, it feels like you're in the birthday suit going to another position in the late <laughs> – <laughs> It feel like – I feel like it, I'm Bucks Bunny and Daffy Duck with, uh, with either nothing but fur or feathers on uh, going to another position. <laughs> Did you play all night? Like Bugs Bunny. <laughs> Can I play all night? I maybe play all night like Jose Kendo did back in 88 <laughs> for the St. Louis Cardinals. <laughs> Has anybody done that since? I don't know. And well, what I mean by that means taking off the gear, especially imagine wearing the gear on a hot day like this here in Moraga. It's totally opposite than in the city. <laughs> yeah. Professor B, you're the, uh, you're the Google of all baseball. Uh, Coach Moore made a made a Bugs Bunny joke, and then you referred to a, a player that was played in the eighties, I believe. <laughs> that was that's like quite his knowledge of baseball it's history is impressive. It's impressive. Yeah, it's, yeah. Talk about the Cardinals with Coleman and Willie McGee. Yeah, speed. <laughs> this is. I mean, they talk about um, saber metrics and uh, playing. I mean, the the Nash, I mean, it's like playing. The, I like the traditional National League style of baseball. Why would they want to have a universal DH in the National League? I feel it's it's totally blaspheming of my childhood. It's totally disrespectful to all of the Generation X who used to go to Giants games or watch National League baseball for so many years to have a DH. Now I could see college in high school. That's a different story, but you know. You know, I, I, I'm i used to – I feel like Tommy Lasorda is rolling over his grave. Davey Johnson and uh, definitely the outspoken Whitey Herzog does not approve of the universal DH in the National League. And I wonder if Bob Costas, uh, who I think is the uh, – he should be the ambassador of baseball broadcasting. Um, I don't think he would not approve of that either, even though he was born in New York, but he spent most of his life in St. Louis 
had that great relationship with Whitey Herzog. Just think me having that relationship with Nino Giortano, the equivalent like uh, both the late Dick Enberg had that relationship with the late Al McGuire for college basketball. Gotcha. He's got a great memory. Yes, sir. Of our last get together, right? May 19th. May 19th, 2020. I watched a little bit of that this morning, just to, that, that reminder where we we're at. Because, like, we didn't know how bad. Well, you got the job at St. Mary's, but not knowing the current of events would flip because of the pandemic. And yeah. and then it was it was tough, you know, yeah. to lose those two and then unfortunately lose that three. But, you know, I, I'm over it now. It's a whole new era for me. I mean, I still have – a lot to prove and people write me off saying, you know, what are you going to do now, B? You know, Coach G ain't around no more. I mean, I'm, I, I'll find a way. And uh, people I run into the streets who go on the USF games and people who watch all my platform, all my social media stuff on Facebook saying, yo, man, Brian, uh, well, I heard what happened up at US, USF, man. You're not there no more. And I said, yeah, I'm not there no more. And just people – um you know, I did, there's a certain standard I live up to, and I want to do it the right way, respectfully. And we could do skits, but I like to do it where it's not going to be offensive. Because you got to remember, Greg got two boys. I have a nep- I have two nephews. One is 20. He's going to great linebacker at City College. He's going to start. And my other nephew, who's 15, plays uh, JV football in San Leandro. And then my niece just graduated high school. She's going to get into some of the entrepreneur business. I'm trying to get her to help me out. I'm going to do some entrepreneurship as well. I like to also have St. Mary's part of the um, part of this satellite digital media experience as well, because you know it's a whole new ball game. Yes, it is, and and I I believe your your point is correct is completely 100% correct. Um, this mic'd up, the SMC way mic'd up uh, episodes, all, all of these episodes will be tailored to uh, everybody in every community. And I think that is our main goal. So uh, moving on, we want to talk about that goal for this SMC way. Uh, what is our vision? Uh, what is our goal? Why are we doing this? Um, in my perspective, I want to say that it is best to do this in order to get in touch with our, our Moraga community. They have given so much to our to uh, to our programs throughout the years, whether whether it's baseball, basketball, soccer, everything. They they give their time. Uh, they have a college in the middle of their of their little town, and uh, it's not easy when you have a place this nice uh, and you know the small town values, but like big time sports, you know, and like these people, they really love their sports here. Their basketball, no, they love their basketball here. But basketball, they love coming out to baseball. And I think that's the biggest thing is, is uh, you know, after our baseball games, so we're walking off the field and there's kids coming out and they're saying, you know, my first name. And, and I'm like, oh, man, I don't know any of these parents, these kids, but they, they're saying our first names. Like, they know us. And uh, and I think it's this is the best way to give back to them is showing that we, we as a community, as a baseball program we want to be transparent with our fans um and that we want to show this side of it uh while having a little fun as well um so turn it over to you coach Moore. i wanted to know what is your vision for the smc way episodes yeah my vision for this podcast is to get together and enjoy each other have fun as you mentioned share with the community but also talk a little bit about what's behind the scenes of St. Mary's baseball, what's behind the scenes for a college student athlete. It's a it's a unique schedule for these players, unique challenges, but those challenges prepare them for life. So if you get to know one or two or even five of our players during these broadcasts, then we think you really understand what they're doing day to day. And to be honest, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, they have personality, uh, so we hope to bring that to you. But they, we also have some great stories on this team. And I think anytime you see a young person working really hard to do things the right way, it's inspiring, it's motivating, uh, it, it's just fun to share. So we're going to share. <clears throat> now, today, I didn't realize we'd get to introduce B. Yeah. Uh, but this, this became kind of a special broadcast. B, 
What? Oh, you want to say? I definitely want to say. Also, um, outside of I, my other work, I'm um, also a program director for uh, Niners Radio. I know there's some 49er fans. Uh, I just got promoted that back in after the, the NFL season concluded. So I'm the new program director for Niners Radio. So, you know, it's going to be a lot of versatility during the fall season, catching up um, with football and doing a little baseball. And I'm going to be there when they have the alumni weekend or when they have these special events, though. And if you guys need an MC or something, I'd love to try to get to that next level, though. That's the goal I'm trying, you know. Cause I still believe I have a lot a lot, to, um, a lot to offer, though, you know. I'm not here to be a, um, a fan sitting on my, on my, on my butt. I, I, I want to I want to have something to throw in and I, and I lead by example though you know I, I you know I've learned a lot from coach G the extension we still gonna have a great relationship and he even told me you know told him and Brenda told me be next spring come on down to a spring training and, yes, sir. you know it's a it's a I mean what Greg Moore has done bringing that culture the Giratano culture, bringing it here to this campus. And I want to say another thing. Y'all keep Coach G and Brenda and the kids in your thoughts and your prayers. Um, and uh, check out the website. We support Coach G. This is, um, this is you know, what he has meant for our lives. So if it wasn't for that man, I would not even be sitting here right now. Yes, sir. B, as we wrap up, and you're right, you have a lot to give. You've given a lot to – players and sports and just coverage you know you've got things specials you've done for years that are now online youtube has some good stuff mm -hmm. but what what should we call you that do you want to be called brian professor you call me, b you call me professor b yeah 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 okay let's well, professor b mark thank you and for uh, getting us all together right. uh, one more thing well no, no no go ahead thank you very much mark and um it's going to be a great season for uh, St. Mary Gales baseball. It's it's a new era, the new ballpark. Um, you know when they when they when they get close to completion, you know, going to be. You know, I'm excited. You know, this is a whole new era, and, and uh, when I hopefully meet some of the alumni, hopefully, um, and definitely want to meet Randy Bennett. Uh, do some other features though, too, in the coming weeks and months ahead. This is going to begin a brand new relationship. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you for. Uh... For sure, Professor B, and th thanks, Coach Moore. I just want to wrap it up really quick, just to show our viewers uh, what we have in, in store. This is this episode was our our pilot episode, our uh, episode 0 0.1 or 1.0. Um, but just to give structure for it, the way that we will be doing it is giving a recap of each and every week. Uh, the next will be a Gale alumni coming on. And, sh and uh, myself, as well as a new co-host, Sam Hoff, one of our uh, one of um, our grounds crew at St. Mary's, will be uh, uh, my co-host, and we will be uh, interviewing uh, some alumni along the way. After that, we'll be doing a recap, a player recap of every week, and then the very last thing will be our hot take of the week. So um, one thing I want to I want to point out is the uh, before we end up is the notable alumni that we've had at this school, um, the alumni that's given back so much that has uh, allowed Gales baseball to be in the light it is, and um, why it gives young men uh, the drive to come here. And I believe that it is guys like Corbin Corbin Burns, uh, Tony Gonsolin. I know we have way more before this, mm. but guys of recent. That, a lot of guys like including and, um, former yeah, knuckleballer, yeah. not the uh, Tom Candiotti. Yeah, Tom, exactly. So Tom Candiotti as well. And we're planning to get all these guys on. And so this year was a very first year that we had four uh, Gales in the All-Star Games across Major League Baseball, Tony Gonsolin and Corbin Burns. And then minor leagues, Kai Bush was uh, drafted last year. Yes, last year. In the second round, I believe it was last year, uh, or two years, two seasons ago, second round, and then uh, Ken Waldachuk. Ken Waldachuk is, uh, is a special story. I played with him for my first uh, two years, um, and uh, he got drafted by the Yankees, I believe, in the fifth round. And uh, funny enough, day one of this episode, uh, episode zero, today was his call-up day. 
Um, he is in. He is with the Athletics. He got traded from the Yankees to Athletics uh, at the deadline, and uh, the game is actually going on right now. It's at 4:05. The A's are playing the Washington Nationals, and we have a brand new Gale in the in the in the majors. And uh, and I believe that anybody could do it because you just see the guy's work ethic. You see everybody that uh, the way they work, the way that this the small group that we like to call that get drafted, that get the call. It's what do they bring to the table? Now I'll bring up really quick guys like uh, Chris Santiago, Chris Campos, um, and Sam Bauer this year. Uh, those are our draft guys from this last year and how they relate to guys like Ken Wallachuk, Corbin Byrne, and Tony Gonsolin. What do they do the same? Well, it's basically all in the prep work. It's a pre-throw. It's post-throw. No matter if these guys are dead tired, they will get their stuff in. They're going to go to bed early. They're going to get their work done. They're going to show up with a good attitude. They got energy at the field, and they want to get stuff done. Uh, and I like that uh, attitude, man. That's yes, the best sir. We, 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 I mean, you know, yeah. and I like to put attitude sense to that. You know, unfortunately, you probably heard what, what happened, but got coach fired. You know, he had three knuckle clowns didn't want to put in the work. And, yeah. you know, you have to put in the work if you want to be successful, you know. Like, you know, like I have that theory. If you don't work for it, you can't have it. That's anything. Yes, you sir. want to try to get that, you want to go on that date with a nice, beautiful, lovely duckling, you got to earn it. Yes, and if sir. you want to do the, you know, extracurricular activity behind the uh, doors in the bedroom, that's your, that's their business, you got to work for it. You got to put in the work. That's as simple as that. That's a lesson to be learned, you know. Yeah. They didn't want to, they did not want to, they they wanted to give Coach G a hard time, and I eventually, when we have that, when I speak with the team, eventually, on a later time, I'm going to address that. That address that. You know, don't give coaches a hard time because they already because if something crazy happens, that's going to fall back on the coach. Yes, and I, sir. And I and you know that, and you know, <clears throat> so much Coach G had taught me about life, about the culture. You know, you know, getting that vision. Like we had during those times at the leadoff dinner over the years, a lot, a yeah. lot of great stuff. You know, a lot of great players came out of it. His son Nico coached over with the Mariners um, in the Dominican Republic, um, and you know, they still have a lot of players still out there reaching out. The um, even during his times at um, Yapavaya and the uh, in the other college uh, in Colorado, and then Arizona State though as well. So you know, there's a lot of people. Have he had touched so many lives? He touched so many yeah. lives. He even he treated me out the dinner. He treated me out the original Joe's. You, uh, he even reached out to a a couple of my church colleagues. Their two sisters. Uh, he reached out to them when their dad had passed away, like seven years ago during the summer. Um, he reached out, and he reached out to them when they were when they lost their dad unexpectedly when he died of a, a massive heart attack, that's what coach G was. I reached out to him when his mom passed. And how about this time of the stories when, when Mickey, that time when he had that tirade against Pepperdine on the championship series, when you heard him screaming, when that, when coach was chewing out that umpire, you could hear his dad just like, uh, just, Having his tirade. Remember when he almost got in the fight with the fraternity guys, Mickey, when he was about 85 years old, and they were heckling, and, and he was in the front row mixing it up, something like that. I do remember this when they were on the road trip against LMU. You wasn't you wasn't there. This was 14, like eight years ago. They had that horrible bot call. They called it a buck, and it was not even close to a buck. Coach went out there, he got bounced. Mickey, I was listening to the game on on the on the internet. I could hear Mickey just screaming in the background. That, <laughs> that got me, Mickey. It got so bad. He went after the umpires after the game. I heard. Oh and man. That, that, I mean, <laughs> and, and, and and there was times. How about times when Coach got thrown out over at Stanford? Remember that time he had that. When TJ threw that, it should have ended the inning. The ending, and he don't play. They call it the Bach. Yep. That was like the equivalent of getting, getting an interception called back because of a holding penalty. <laughs> uh, it got naked, and then later on, coach got thrown out. He was fuming though. I mean, that was. Uh, I mean, 
coach did not want to lose to Stanford. I mean, and I mean, unfortunately, this year, I mean, they've lost now. Stanford's beaten USF 14 in a row, but you guys got one win last year against them. Yeah. And then Stanford never lost another regular season game. Yeah. After that. So, you know, if you look at the positive of, of St. Mary's, you beat the Don's three one run games. All of them went, I mean, and then, you know, um, so I, I look at last year's team, they're not they're not that far away of getting back to where it was when Val, Coach Valenzuela was there. They they're not that far away. They um they, they keep healthy, you know. And you know, work hard in practice. They're they're going to be right in this thing uh, next year because it's a six team team now. Six teams get in. It's the wild card knockout: three versus six, four versus five. Then the the survivors go into the semifinals of the double elimination for a chance to get into the championship uh, finals. Without a doubt, yes, sir. He's an encyclopedia. Mark, thanks for hosting us today. <laughs> Any parting Thank words you. that? that you have professor or that mark has uh mark i i thank you for being on as a special guest this is like the pilot this is like my very first episode you know yeah it's like you know like my, my friend who i you know that story you know i told told greg i said she told me when i i was i wasn't coming back to, i was leaving usf it was on that same day they were playing i think uh, University of Nevada, Reno, or something like that, on that midweek, on that nice warm day back in March. And I told her I was. I, I told her I left, and they were playing that afternoon. And she told me, you know, when that one door closes, another one opens. And I can't wait. The next time I see her, I know she's going to be very happy for me. I got this new gig at St. Mary's, and you know, she's a very nice person, very intelligent, very smart. She got the brains and the wits. <laughs> yes, sir. Well, Professor B, you. Uh... You definitely uh, took control of this over this first episode, and you did it with with very with compassion and uh, and some good energy. And so we, we welcome you to the St. Mary's family. Um, our audience knows our schedule for uh, for these next episodes. Each episode will be coming out between Wednesday and Friday uh, of every week. Um, and we are looking forward to seeing everybody and hopefully having uh, co uh, Professor B back on to um, tell us some more about his legendary baseball career and, and share his uh, immense amount of knowledge with us. So uh, from behalf of all of St. Mary's baseball, St. Mary's community, uh, everybody take care. Coach B, Coach Moore, last words. Let's have a great week. Let's do it. All right, guys. Take care.